The objective today is to describe how an ANSI escape code works. So this is just a fun lesson. Your table of contents, which is like a menu, but the food is words, shows us that we'll start with a bad definition of what an ANSI escape code is, but it's official, so why not start there? Then we'll take a field trip to the terminal where we really get to see what these ANSI escape codes can do. And then I'll just finish the lesson by making a connection to the other encodings that are out there. Add some details about this whole concept of an escape character to maybe uh, make it more meaningful to you, especially if you're interested in programming. And that'll be it. It'll be a very short lesson. So an ANSI escape sequence is a standard for in-band signaling to control the cursor location, color, and other options on video text terminals and terminal emulators. Certain sequences of bytes, most starting with escape and that square bracket, are embedded into the text which the terminal looks for and interprets as commands, not as character codes. So here's some more information about in-band signaling, but basically when you type in something crazy like this, the terminal will output a different out type of output. So rather than just a plain white text, it'll give you maybe red, or it'll underline it, or it'll make it blink. It'll do all kinds of different things. So let's go check that out. And I think the best way to do that is through a terminal where I start with Python and give you something you're very familiar with here, like printing the word hi. But see how it's just plain and white? Well, to change that, let me look at my cheat paper over here. So I could say to print, and I'll still start with a, whoops, I accidentally pushed enter. So I'll still start with a quote, but instead of just going right into the text, I'll type in backslash 033 in that little square bracket I mentioned earlier. Instead of red, let's go with, I think, um, this one, 94 is green. And then I'll just make it blink, and then M for start the text. This is where I'll type words. I'll go with another backslash, 033, and then that square bracket again, and it's only the left one. And then finish with a 0M to just say I am done doing all that crazy escapiness. So I push enter, and that was not green. It looks like blue, and it is underlined. Oh yeah, 4 is un underlined. So let me press the up arrow, and instead of giving the 4 command, I'm going to give the 5 command for a blinking text. And there it is. It's blinking instead of underlined. Now I could do both, and I can just keep going with like a lot of different things. Here we go. But this is just something cool I thought I'd show my students. And if I was to read through what you're looking at here, let me make it bigger actually. If I was to read through this right here, I would say first I want you to print a string, like that's why the quote starts. So in Python, the command for printing a string, a string must be inside the quote. But, but then I'm going to escape the Python language. I'm going to escape ASCII and type in this number 94, which in this scenario is giving me blue. And then I'm going to add another parameter, the number 4 and then another parameter, and then M says start text here. So now that's the command to interpret this text as normal. And then this is in the escapiness, <laughs> in end escaping. Set everything back to normal, and then that way, by saying set everything back to normal, the next time I go to print something, it'll be normal and white. If I go back, As you can see, this is pretty chaotic. So there you go, just some fun terminal stuff. And if you're thinking ANSI, well that sounds like ASCII, that's a very good connection you're making there. ANSI is just like an extension, it has a lot of control characters. So instead of just displaying text, you could also control things about that text, like I said before with the color, and it, and it says other options. So. Near the end of the lesson, I'll give you a whole table of options to choose from so you can experiment with, with it yourself. So earlier when I said it's an extension of like ASCII, basically we have 0 to 127 in terms of all these letters and numbers on the keyboard and the symbols that we can type and have it show up on a computer. Well, ANSI assigned additional numbers 128 to 255 to add all kinds of extra characters and as you can read right here think of like Western Europe when you're thinking of the ANSI extension so we're talking like the Spain side of Europe 
So here in America, most terminal emulators interpret at least some of the ANSI escape characters in the output text. I also learned that the arrow keys are in that ANSI realm, and you can type in these escape characters in a program, so therefore you can utilize the uh, arrow keys there. I asked the question, are all ANSI escape codes the same? Well, that's definitely not true. Apparently, depending on the computer you're on, that might be um, different. And by showing you that terminal, this is just something flashy. I like to show my students. It kind of gets them uh, maybe more interested in code in class. It's funny. I think of code like a Superman interesting level type of thing, but you could still make even something that's interesting even more flashy. And since I went over it in class, I thought I'd make a video in case anybody missed it and was interested in how they could do what we had learned that day. And if you really want to play around with what I've taught you so far, let's see if you could find a way to use this concept of up arrow, down arrow, etc. in um, that Python interpreter on the command line. Now we have all kinds of ways to show characters in an output, like different encodings. Unicode is an attempt to clear up many incom incompatible one-byte encodings, and they do this by giving every character a number that everyone agrees with, and this results in a two-byte code, so there's a lot of numbers to choose from, from 0 to 65,000. So when you see Unicode, that's what Unicode is, it's just a regular encoding. Your ASCII numbers are going to be a part of that, but then there's just so many more. Some of the symbols you can make are pretty crazy. Um, the person here on Reddit was saying that the main drawback is that you're using twice as much space as necessary for simple English text. Almost half of the bytes will be zero because most of the numbers you're storing are under 255. So that's a little frustrating. But if you think about the size uh, most hard drives can hold nowadays, if you have a one terabyte drive, that's one trillion bytes it can hold. Having a couple extra shouldn't be too big a deal. But if it is, here's UTF-8, and UTF-8 is a way to represent the full range of Unicode characters while still being backwards compatible with ASCII. ASCII characters 0 to 127 are stored as one byte, just as they were before. And then the numbers 128 to 255 are used to represent the higher characters. Now some characters fit in two bytes, but some take three bytes. A UTF-8 is more or less the default choice for the internet. So if you hear ANSI though, don't get confused. Um, it's not an actual standard. Essentially, it's just an extension, like I mentioned before. On Stack Exchange, on Stack Overflow, they were going crazy on there saying it's just completely wrong to call this um, extension an ANSI standard. This organization hasn't actually standardized them, but if you look up Windows 1252 on Wikipedia, you'll find a lot of uh, what's called code pages. And a picture is worth a thousand words. If I go there myself, not only can you see all the colors, I should have typed in 92 earlier. It looks like I did uh, 96 or 94, or one of those two. Oh, but the point is, if I go to Wikipedia and type in Windows, Windows code pages, as you can see, we have all these other languages that will need to be um, represented on a computer monitor in countries that speak these languages. So for Microsoft to use the code page to have the, in the correct encoding, those keyboards can type things out and they can be accurately shown on a monitor. Now be aware, this is a thing that was from the 80s and 90s. Unicode is supposed to be the thing that takes over. And to confuse you guys even more, ANSI does not clearly refer to any standard. It is something you can choose as an encoding when you save um, a document on Notepad, though. Now, you may have heard of escape characters in programming. A lot of these are going to look familiar to my students, especially that new line one. So just the general idea of what an escape character was interesting. And if you're looking at a URL, you would see this little percent sign, which is an escape character for that context. And if you are interested in what a real ANSI standard is, we could take the keyboard, for example. This is an ANSI layout, and this is an ISO layout. Uh, looking at my keyboard here, since I have the return like that and the backslash right above the return and under the backspace, that's a good way to remember where the backslash is. It's under the backspace. So there you go. Those are escape characters. Here's a list of some more for you to try out. Go forth and have fun experimenting.